This may seem a typical recording session, but at the BBC's Radiophonic Workshop, nothing's as simple as it sounds. OK, that was fine, so what we'd like next time is if you can come off the note absolutely dead on the end, and we'll mix that one down afterwards, OK? These people are working on the department's first electronic rock opera, Rococo. Rococo. Mm -hmm. And we've got tracks 14, 15 and 60. Singers and conventional musical instruments are all part of it. But when the workshop has given this new musical the electronic treatment, it takes on another dimension. It's recreated with weird and wonderful sound effects. But once you've got sound on tape, it becomes an object. You can. You can handle it, you can hold a piece of sound and you can play it in opposite directions, you can play it at different speeds, you can cut it up, you can even stretch the tape. It doesn't do much good to it, but it changes the sound. So Desmond Briscoe is the workshop's director and he looks back on the early days when, with co-founder Daphne Oram, he started the experimental studios back in the 1950s. So we were allocated one room, significantly room 13, at the music studios at Maida Vale and a very small budget and some redundant equipment including the, the wartime mixing desk from the Albert Hall and all this started in April 58. Uh, there were some radio programs and then suddenly there was a demand from television for the, the latest in the Quatermass series, Quatermass and the Pit and uh, this um, gave an opportunity to produce some totally new sound. <laughs> Today's sophisticated equipment and other futuristic sound machines gives the workshop new scope. Liz Parker is the only girl of the seven producers in the department. She uses the new techniques to create special effects for the television series Blake 7. Her job is to invent and manipulate those fascinating and unearthly noises which make the programme come alive. You wouldn't believe how wooden the whole uh, the whole episode looks when you first get to see it and how comic it looks quite often because um, you know the actors are pushing pushing doors open and shooting guns and absolutely nothing is happening but by the time I put the sounds on hopefully uh, it does look a little more exciting Roger, you're a producer here at the Radiophonic Workshop, but you don't just do sound effects. In fact, you, you do a lot of the theme tunes for radio and television programmes as well, don't you? That's true, but uh, quite often a tune can start with a sound effect. For example, the sound of a coin falling on a table. A fairly ordinary sound in itself, but if you record it onto a tape machine and make a tape loop out of it, what you can end up with is the pattern of sound, a musical pattern of a coin falling on a table. This is what it sounds like. Now that's got a sort of musical feel to it and if you sit down at the synthesizer and play that it's not long before a tune starts to suggest itself to you. While describing all that, in fact, you sounded more like a musician than a technician. Is that how you see yourself? Yes, I think so. We look upon ourselves as composers. We have got a technical background, of course. We were all in doing other jobs in the BBC before we arrived here. But I've always been a musician, playing in bands, writing music in my spare time. So when I arrived here, I found that I slotted in pretty well. So once you've got the sound of the money falling and you've got the basic music line, what happens then? Well, you go back to your quarter inch, you play from there onto this eight track tape machine, say record it on track one up there, and then go to the synthesizer, play the tune on track two, say, readjust the synthesizer and then play the bass line onto track three, eventually build up a whole pattern of musical sounds until you've got a practically a full orchestra. Then you go down to the mixing desk and mix down the sounds onto the quarter inch and eventually end up with something like this. Sixteen years ago, Doctor Who cashed in on the electronic sound effects and the Daleks were born. Right, Vera, this is a little synthesizer. It produces 
all sorts of peculiar noises, but it can also be used to treat speech and the dialect voice is obviously an actor's voice that we put through a ring modulator here and out comes a dialect. So let's plug it up like that and you could well be on the way to becoming the first woman dialect. Let's have a go. I am a female Dalek. I am a female Dalek. Well, they do say that the uh, female of the species is more sinister than the male, and I, I think, think you're right. It sounds like it. Yes, <laughs> I think you've got that off pat. Tell me how you do a K9. Yes, is it the same, same, like same principle. Yes. Uh, the actor's voice is fed through a, uh, this little device that m makes him metallic and doggy, if you like. Yes. But the actor does contribute a lot to the dramatic content of yes. the yes. of the effect. Now, Dick, that is a sound we all know. It's the TARDIS taking off, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Well, is your job here basically just creating sound effects for, for programmes? Yes. Over the last 20 years, uh, we've used anything for an old galvanised iron water tank, uh, bits of string, paper bags, but uh, see if you can guess what this one is. Well, it sounds horrible at any rate. What is it? Well, obviously, it's something quite happy for Doctor Who because it sounds nasty and squelchy. In fact, it was me with a handful of hand cleansing cream. Record that and alter the sound and mix it all together and you get that sort of yes. thing. Well, how about the TARDIS? How's that done? Can you show me? Yes, come over here. But this is an old piano. What's it got to do with time travel and the TARDIS? You tell me. Well, we make the sound of the TARDIS on this old piano, a key on the strings. And if we record that and mix the sounds together and do a bit of magic with it, uh, it comes out as a TARDIS. Well, yet another illusion shattered and all with a simple key. Oh, a simple key. Well, nobody thought the radiophonic workshop would last when it started all those years ago. But these days, it's in demand, not only by radio and television producers, but by the viewers as well. The recent television documentary, The Body in Question, included a splendid piece of electronic music created here in this workshop. And for days, the BBC switchboards were jammed with viewers trying to find out where they could get it. Now, that music may have sounded like a choral work, but in fact, it was created using no voices and no instruments. It started with a simple ticking of a clock. 